Hey guys, so this is a, a sign at the start of the path saying um, good luck. So here I am kicking off at about 8 a.m. Look at that beautiful view in the background. Whew, amazing. And these are my travel buddies here. Look, they've just, they're here ready to start just coincidentally. I don't know how much we'll see of each other, but um, here's the start of uh, my little challenge. So I'm a mile in guys, over 1% done. Woohoo! I just wanted to show this background. Look at how amazing that is, how beautiful. With the sun rising over there. Awesome, eh? Absolutely awesome. And yes, this is gonna get hard. But right now, what a beautiful morning for a walk. Gotta enjoy the journey, hey? Hey guys, so I have stopped at Fellwater Coffee here and this is my newfound friend, Owen. Give him a wave, there's Owen there. Hey. Uh, so Owen, I'm basically eating him out of house and home. He's given me a, a stool to sit on because I'm so knackered. There's a stool there. He's letting me plug my phone in to charge my phone because I'm so low on battery. And I'm yeah, basically eating, drinking as much as I can in the 10 minutes that I've stopped here. So it's amazing the people you meet and the stuff you do on the courses. I didn't know this was here. We're just outside Carlisle. Where are we, Owen? Uh, Rickaby Park. Rickaby Park. So if you decide to walk Adrian's Wall, make sure you stop at Rickaby Park and uh, get some nice coffee from uh, Fellwater Coffee. But it's funny, isn't it? You, you don't know where you're going to get food and you don't know where you're going to get drink, but it's going to happen somewhere. I was worried about my phone running out of battery and now I've got a bit more charge. It's all good. Happy investing. Hey guys, the sun is setting. How beautiful is that? What a vista behind me then. This is Hadrian's Wall in the background, the path in the, where the wall used to be. Uh, before the stone was <laughs> plundered and used by farmers and, and buildings. So there's the path there and it goes up that way. And I've just seen that little acorn on that post there that indicates that you should be walking this way if you're coming from Newcastle. So, ah, oh, it is painful now. I'm 10 hours in, so I've been doing regular updates like every hour or two on the podcast. So you can go and and look, by the time this is edited, the podcast will probably be live and you can listen to a really in-depth account of my hike. But, oh, it's painful now, really painful. But it's never gonna be easy, is it? And quite frankly, the, the longest I've ever exercised is 13 and a half hours. I'm at 10 hours now, the sun's setting. I think I've got about half an hour, 45 minutes of daylight, of, of like walking light. Then I'll have my head torch on and I think the head torch has got to last 12 hours. I think it'll start getting walking light again at 7 a.m. But oh, the thought of walking for 12 hours. Last night it hit nearly zero, maybe three or four degrees. That's cold, cold when I got up this morning. So yeah, I'm nervous, in pain and struggling, frankly. But <laughs> if it was easy, everyone would do it. And if it was easy, I wouldn't feel amazing afterwards. So. I'm uh, digging deep, <laughs> putting one foot in front of the other. I'll keep you posted. Hey guys, so it's rapidly getting dark. I'm gonna have the head torch on in just a minute. It's getting cold, I'm wearing three layers. Got my gloves out. Just stopped at one of these little huts for a bit of refreshment. Now the fun starts. I am um, eating a soggy, toasted sandwich that a lovely landlady just made me from a pub I just stopped in and they let me charge my phone for 10 minutes gave me a drink told me I was crazy and, uh, and made me a toasted sandwich very kindly but yeah this is the rain you can't really see it very well because my phone's in a waterproof case yeah the locals are telling me how the hardest bits to come <laughs> there's nowhere else to stop till the morning they said that really filled me with enthusiasm and to be honest they fueled my motivation. It is 10 p.m. Been going 14 hours. Um, this is the longest I've ever exercised for continuously. I can only see 20 feet in front of my face, which is actually helping because uh, I'm not able to see miles and miles of greenery that I've got to trek over. All good. Easy work. Hey guys, it is about 8.30 a.m. on Friday morning. 
<laughs> I've had a rough 24 hours. Oh, it is 24 hours almost exactly. So I hiked almost continuously for 20 hours. I started at quarter to eight yesterday, Thursday. And at, look at that view in the background. Wow. Just amazing. My phone's a bit dirty, so the, there's a lake there. This is Hadrian's Wall, right here. Look at some of these rocks and stuff. They're hard to navigate <laughs> in the middle of the night. So it got to quarter to four last night and oh, I was getting slower and slower. It was raining. <laughs> it was coming sideways. I was cold. My feet were really hurting. My stride had shortened. Some of the stretches on this wall, <laughs> like I had seen pictures of it, like grassy knolls, you know, all smooth. Um, parts of it, I kid you not, I was doing on hands and feet. I had, I had my hands on, it was so steep. I was like almost climbing up it. Unbelievable. And then you had to go down the other side and up and down and up and down. Oh my goodness. So the long and short of it was, it got to quarter to four this morning and I decided to call it a day. Could I have gone further? Ah, that's the challenge, isn't it? That's the question. Could I have, did I give in or was I sensible? I just popped my bivy bag up. It's got a little pole in it and a, and a, a little bit of string to hold it up. In my sleeping bag and got in. I was freezing. Oh, I shivered and shivered and shivered. I shivered for hours, actually. I did fall asleep a little bit, probably only got an hour's sleep and decided to call it a day. So I have finished. I've got about a mile now to an extraction point. Sounds very military, doesn't it? But um, I've got a taxi booked to come and get me from a visitor center, which is about a mile ahead, which is funnily enough, the visitor center where I first had this idea because I brought my boys here and my other half and her son a few months ago and I, I saw the, the path I thought oh that'd be good fun to walk but here's the interesting thing right did I fail or did I succeed I've never exercised continuously for 20 hours before my previous record was 13 and a half hours when I did my Ironman about six years ago and I've never traveled that far before now <laughs> Strava stopped working I must have turned it off at some point but I don't think I missed that much of it it's very hard to know how much I missed Strava's reading 48 miles it's possible I missed two miles probably more like a mile so I think I did like 49 ish miles so to do best part of 50 miles and 20 hours I'm really chuffed with really chuffed I've got, <laughs> I took my trainers off to get in the bivy bag and my socks, they were sodden, both are sodden. I've had to put <laughs> wet socks and wet trainers on this morning, it's horrible. But my feet, and my toes especially, have got blisters the size of grapes. I've never seen such big blisters. They're going to be, uh, oh, if they pop on this last mile, they're going to hurt. <laughs> Well, they hurt already, but it's here's the thing, though. Here's the psychology behind it. It's very interesting. I've had a little gel. I had bought a few gels with me, so I've had a gel that's got caffeine in it. I don't have much caffeine in my diet, and so caffeine has a really strong effect on me. I've had two paracetamol this morning, and now I'm thinking, oh, I could carry on. <laughs> and then I was thinking, no, you can't. <laughs> You were shivering uncontrollably. You've had one hour's sleep. <laughs> God, so let's just say I have done 50 miles for ease. It's 84 miles long. So there's 34 miles to go. On this kind of terrain, I'm doing about two miles an hour. Like, just look. Well, you have to really like pick each foot. Last night I was slipping and sliding in the rain. I had to navigate around cows and sheep. It's hilarious. It is funny. I was laughing to myself. I was reminding myself of the SAS saying, cheerfulness in the face of adversity. And uh, I was trying to embody that spirit. <laughs> I'm not a military man. I've never been in the military. But I like that saying. I like that attitude. Now I'm thinking, oh, could I carry on? And I'm not gonna carry on. I'm not gonna carry on. I'm gonna call it a day. I'm gonna return. I will conquer it, but I've learned a lot from it. And so you think about it, right? Has it been a failure or has it been a success? 
I've got a personal best. I've never exercised for that long, never walked that far. I wore the wrong footwear. Trainers, really bad idea. I got my feet wet in the first few hours. That's why I've got all the blisters. I've never had blisters like this before. And I've spent hours and hours in running trainers. I've run marathons. These are especially good trainers, actually. Like, they suit the shape of my feet really well. But getting them wet was a massive mistake. Massive mistake. I'll come back and I'll do it. I can do it in one go. I know I can do it in one go. I need to train more. I was kind of like thinking to myself, well, it's more of a challenge if you don't train. And that's true. That's true. <laughs> but it also makes <laughs> it makes it a lot harder. A lot, lot harder. The 34 miles, like right now I'm thinking, oh, I could carry on. 34 miles left, let's say. And I do two miles an hour, which I think I'm a bit slower than that. But that is 17 hours isn't it i don't believe i can do that and maybe that's me being weak but i don't i don't think i can do it probably can i think we're all capable way more than we know i'm gonna choose not to do it <laughs> i'm gonna take that on the chin i'm gonna sit down one of my um partners I had some amazingly supportive messages from friends and family and clients and one of my clients said um i bet you'll have a long list of like best next times and everything i do in business i do generally do a like best next time it's like an, an analysis every sales interaction you should definitely do a like best next time for i thought yeah what well, a good idea i've learned loads learned loads about myself learned loads about physical challenges so i am i'm going to do like best next times on it so hopefully this little episode has motivated you perhaps to step outside your comfort zone i'm massively i've been massively outside my comfort zone my feet are outside their comfort zone right now i keep stroking my groin because it's so sore <laughs> just like to check everything's still there because it hurts so much i am really looking forward to a, a warm bath and oh and some sleep oh tired and some proper food my, my poor digestion struggling with i was just forcing myself to eat i was trying to eat for 350 calories an hour which obviously over 20 hours is 7,000 calories um and that i found that hard like i felt nauseous for most of the time i was like right you got you got a handful of peanuts just eat two of them <laughs> and then like 10 minutes later go on eat a few more tough 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 but hey what an amazing sunrise what an amazing vista it's all paid for isn't it it's all been earned i hope i've inspired you challenged you motivated you to step outside your comfort zone whether that's in your property business whether it's personally in your relationships in your fitness i hadn't anticipated this but hopefully you can hear it in my voice hopefully you can sense my demeanor i'm not disappointed of course it would have been great to have done the whole thing but who cares no one no one else cares it's me i set myself an arbitrary challenge if hadrian's wall had been 70 miles i would have set myself that if it'd been 100 miles it would have been that it's, it's completely arbitrary if there'd been some kind of event walk as far as you can in 20 hours I would have been delighted with 49, 50 miles. And so I am not disappointed. I'm really pleased. It was like driving up here. It's about a three and a half hour drive up to Carlisle from, from Leicestershire. Driving up here, I was thinking, oh, I feel a bit poorly. I feel like I'm getting a cold. And I was like checking my glands. And I had to stop myself. I was like, Frank, stop being a wimp. <laughs> You're not poorly you're just scared and so i won that battle I, I did i i started i didn't give in i woke up feeling oh a bit tired i only had seven hours sleep the night before only <laughs> seven hours sleep to full night's sleep i feel amazing because i've challenged myself i was so fast i lay in my sleeping bag with all my clothes on i was soaked to the skin all of my layers were soaked i took my rain jacket off because it was so wet but everything else I wore, wore my hat, <laughs> wore my neck warmer. Um, I took my, my big, I've got these massive gloves, these big skiing gloves. These are my big old snowboarding gloves. I took those off, I didn't sleep in those. But I lay in this bivvy 
bag which is basically just an oversized sleeping bag with a, a pole on it and I shivered I was in the fetus position and I just shivered and I was thinking right you're okay Frank the sun will come up in about three hours I couldn't reach any food I couldn't reach any water so I just lay there I messaged my other half so that she didn't worry because she's been tracking me on my iPhone so I didn't want her to worry that I hadn't moved in four hours <laughs> and I was like <laughs> stuck in a ditch which the irony was I was stuck in a ditch <laughs> but it's one that I chose and I found this little hollow I put my bivvy bag there and stuff I think most people say this is a failure because you know I set out to do 84 miles without stopping and I gave up or stopped quit at 50 odd miles but here's the thing I risked failure and the chances of me completing this I didn't know I really really didn't know what my chances were of of doing this I think I thought they were about 70 percent I think that's what I was thinking and that if I really dug in I could I had a good chance of getting it done there's a lot of things that could have gone wrong weather which I was hit by pretty bad weather um, temperature if it had gone down to freezing I think that would have been hard it didn't stayed about five degrees last night which is still cold <laughs> and next time I do it in August because there'd be less darkness <laughs> and a lot warmer <laughs> and and also ah the ground was so wet I was slipping and sliding of course every time you slip and slide you have to like tense yourself up your muscles are working harder to try and control your feet I'm wearing road trainers because I thought they'd give me more cushioning, but that was a mistake. I think in retrospect, I probably had a 20% chance of completing it. And I'm, I'm cool with that. I, like, I love the challenge. But hopefully, like, when was the last time you attempted something where you had a 20% chance of success? An 80% chance of failure? And I think that's a habit. I think it's a habit to try stuff, to attempt stuff where the likelihood is it's not gonna pay off. Because if you can minimize the risk, you know, what was the risk of this? Well, I guess I could have died, <laughs> but not really, because when I really was worried about my health, got in my little bivvy bag and waited it out. So I don't think it was really, I was a bit worried about falling over and I knew my blood sugars were getting low. And I knew I was getting cold. I was shivering whilst walking. But but I mitigated that risk by having a bivvy bag. If you can get the risk down to a manageable level, a really low level, there's nothing to stop you attempting things that are really hard or unlikely to succeed. And if you attempt enough of them, especially in your property business, then you're going to fly. You're going to absolutely fly because some of those will pay off and if you're attempting stuff that's really hard you only need a few of them to pay off if you can get the result of failure so if you get the consequences of failure right down the ones that do pay off the ones that oh this is interesting I've got a choice I can go over a stile or through a gate <laughs> I'm going through the gate <laughs> all day long <laughs> if you watch me climb over that stile now oh my goodness it'd probably take me 10 minutes and I'd probably fall over as well <laughs> face plant into the rocks the other side but if you get your consequences of failure down then you can have as many of those long odds gambles as you like and it's it, it's definitely instilled in us to not risk failure to only answer questions when we know the answer how many times did we as kids put our hands up in class and answer something incorrectly and the teacher said no that's wrong Johnny what's the answer Johnny says it's this and the teacher says yes that's right Johnny well done he didn't say well done for having a go Frank well done for risking failure Frank or well done for failing. If you keep having goes like that, you're gonna be made for life. Never heard a teacher say that before. We are conditioned, I sit my own boys and I really try and support them to be brave, to be courageous, to answer questions that they don't know the answer to, to have a go. And when I say don't know the answer to, I mean like think, think what it could be and then have a guess because I think that's really valuable. I think it's a valuable lesson for us in business. So 
I hope I've challenged you. I hope I've inspired you. And until next time, happy investing.